All right, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Kevin Rugamba, and uh, it is a pleasure to be presenting to you this panel brought to you by Nige Nige and Midem, uh, which is a spotlight on East Africa where we'll be focused on discussion, a discussion around how to get into East Africa, specifically the music industry. And um, before, before we get into uh, this discussion, I would like to uh, uh, get the, the panelists to introduce um, themselves, starting with Martha. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Martha Huro, and I work for a company called Transnet Music, otherwise or popularly known as Boomplay, which is an um, online distribution and streaming service. So we offer music and videos as well. And I am happy to be here. Thank you to Nyugenyege and Media for having me. Um, all right, I'll go. My name is George Goshui, um, also known as Poji. I'm here representing a company called MOOC Africa. We're a Nairobi-based -based tech company that builds solutions around payments for artists and event organizers. So we operate in Kenya, Uganda, and Rwanda, and we're happy to be um, having conversations with such wise people on how to put the, the, this area of Africa on the map. All right, maybe I'll jump in next. Uh, my name is Ali Alibai. I'm the CEO of Talent Africa and TAG Studios, um, based in Kampala, Uganda, but operating all over East Africa and beyond. Um, we're an event, entertainment, media, marketing, talent agency, and production company, pretty much a 360 entertainment company. Uh, we produce some of the biggest events in the region, including the Nige Nige Festival. Thank you. Let me also jump in. I'm Samuel Sangwa. I'm the Africa Regional Director of the International Confederation of Societies of Author and Composer, known as CISAC. So CISAC brings together corporate societies from all around the world. And in Africa, we have 37 corporate societies, including corporate societies from Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, and Tanzania. And I'm really, really pleased uh, to be part of this panel, thanks to Nyege Nyege and to Miriam. Thank you all for, for your introductions. And again, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to have you all uh, here to, to engage in this discussion. And so, as I said, the, the theme of this discussion is getting into East Africa, getting into the East African uh, music industry. So I'll, I'll first like to start maybe with, with a few questions um, that are broad enough to, to have um, you all uh, share some, some responses, some perspectives, and then I hope to have enough time to, to ask each of you an individual question that speaks to your areas of, of um, expertise and knowledge. So I think to, to start us off, getting into East Africa, what, what are the key steps for making it in this region as an international artist or executive or, or company? Uh, Martha, do you want to go first? Ladies first. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, um, um, just like any other market where um, people or international artists, international companies want to um, come in, do your research. Um, I always advocate for research because everybody puts um, everything together in a shell just because it's East Africa, we're a storyteller, we have a certain sound always speak Swahili as the main language, so you want to just scratch the surface? No, um, I mean the perfect um, uh, way of getting into a market anyway is through research and East Africa is no different. And uh, I mean, we also enjoy good music as much as we are storytellers, we want to dance, we want to, you know, feel good and all that. So, I mean, if research is done on the first um, step, this should be very easy for you as an international artist, international company to come into the market. There are various um, traditions that permit the East African community. Please remember that East Africa is not one country. We have different traditions, different things that are done in Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, Rwanda. So it's different things that um, appeal to different audiences in the different markets. So 
once research is done and you um, you know you talk to the you know for example music execs or you talk to people in the industry these are things that will come out and um, you can you know make your decision based on that so I will highly advocate for for research which is like the most important component when you're coming into the market yeah, research yeah. and music, definitely key, key elements, especially an emphasis on um, the research. Uh, Ali, as, as a producer of uh, an international music festival based in East Africa, as well as a producer of many shows that have attracted international artists to the region, what, uh, do you have anything to add to this, um, to this point? Yeah, sure. As, a, as international artists, I feel like it's important for these artists to... Um, you know, to make sure their music is distributed in this region, um, you know, work on doing media tours, work with people in each country to help you do your PR. You know, there's, there's, there's PR agencies, there's booking agencies that are East Africa based that can help you actually get uh, the ball rolling in, in, um, in this region. Um, and then for, 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 um, for the East African artists, you know, they need to uh, keep a, create a unique African sound you know, invest in good content like videos and strategic collaborations and um, make connections. You know, we need to treat East Africa as, as one big region. I mean, don't just focus on your country, focus on the whole region. And um, yeah, and for companies, I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an it's a open market here. There's a lot of stuff to do. Um, you know, just focus on the new trends, stay ahead of the game. Um, the digital movement is so important. And, you know, don't be afraid to be different and try something different and create your own lane. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Ali. It's clear that there, are, um, the, that, that there are emerging trends and also um, elements in, in the regional industry that they're really um, starting to, um, to, you know, create a certain infrastructure um, for, for the region. Uh, but like, I'd, I'd now, now I'd like to hear from, from Porgy, from George, um, uh, perhaps about the areas of growth are, um, in this music industry. What are the areas for growth and, and, and those where you see the, um, the East African music industry needing new players or, or new businesses? What are some of the missing elements from your perspective, if any? <clears throat> I'd say Ali has, has touched on one of the most important ones. Um, a lot of East African um, efforts in the music industry have been very country-based. Now, um, I, I would, when you do the research, you'll realize that there's no one size fits all in East Africa, right? What works in Kenya might not work in Tanzania or that. However, being able to, con to put this block together and to look at the numbers that Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, South Sudan, Ethiopia, if we put those together, the kind of numbers that we are looking at in terms of consumers is huge. So there's been little effort to combine those consumers into one block and also to create channels where artists can tap into all of those at once. So right now, if an artist wants to break out um, outside of PR, they would need to physically leave Nairobi, go to Kampala, come to Kigali. They'd need to move around to promo, but we, don't, we haven't built the infrastructure. Um, and the huge opportunity is that our populations are very young in East Africa. So a lot of them are digital. So we don't, it's not as difficult as before when we had to distribute CDs and, and go out physically to do stuff. Right now through digital distribution, we can be able to reach uh, a very large audience. So I think it's just that being able to manage the infrastructure and the artists to be able to reach out to a, a bigger audience, I think is the gap right now. Thank you, George. And uh, Samuel, from, from your perspective and your capacity, are there any other uh, growth opportunities that, that, um, that you think must, you know, we must pay attention to or must be realized in um, this, the region's music industry? Yes, I, I think uh, there is a, 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 a potential for growth within the industry, within the East Africa. And first of all, I would like to go back to the question about what are the key elements might need to know or to have when it's come, uh, when they come into the region or any other artists within the region, what do they need to know? So first of all, you have a policy framework, uh, 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 for instance, which allows citizens to move 
in the region. You have what we call the East Africa single visa policy. So with one visa from Kenya, you can go up to, to Rwanda. You don't need to pay another visa. So for any international uh, 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 player operators, this is already an enabling environment for them to move. You can come as an artist if you want to make a tool. Yes. And also for the, 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 the artists or operators within the ESC, we also have a free movement where with, with your, your ID, for instance, from Rwanda, you can go to Uganda and to Kenya. So this is such an opportunity where we can move without so many hurdles. And definitely you have this region which we may call the Swahili region. So you have a huge uh, potential. If you go a uh, collab with an, uh, an artist within the ESC speaking Swahili, you are sure to reach out a, 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 a audience from Tanzania to Kenya, to Uganda, and even some part of, of, of Congo, some part of, of, uh, of um, Mozambique and the like. So this is a, 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 a huge opportunity. Now in terms of growth, I believe we still need to have operators like publisher. As of now, we still have publisher operating at national level, but we may need to look at publisher playing a, a, a more a, a active role at the, the, the ESC as a region. So I believe there is an opportunity there, and this can be a ESC publisher or international publisher, there is an opportunity which is there. The other opportunity which I want to mention is the convergence between creative industry and IC, ICT, I would say. And I believe Marta, who's from Boomplay, may uh, elaborate further, but more and more we see convergence of the creative industry, the tourism, and, and the ICT. And there, again, there is room for, for, for growth. A number of infrastructure are already put in place. We still need to increase the connectivity. As George said, we have a young population. So there is room also there to, to work and there is a market uh, potential. Indeed, and uh, um, thank you, Samuel. And indeed, we'll, we'll get to the, the convergence, especially between the creative industry and ICT in, in, in a bit. Um, and um, thank you all, thank you all for, for sharing so far. Of course, uh, a lot of potential, a lot of opportunities out there. Thank you for, for highlighting many of them and uh, some progress also being made. Uh, but you know, it's, it's 2020, let's not ignore the elephant in the room. Uh, there is uh, a COVID pandemic ongoing. There is a crisis, right? Um, and so how, how do you feel like this crisis has affected the region and, and its music industry uh, more specifically? Um, I think maybe uh, let's, let's start with Martha again. Okay, I think it's, uh, it, the, the effect of this pandemic is global. And East Africa has not been left behind where we've seen, you know, shows canceled, clubs not opening, where most of our artists uh, do their shows or event organizers um, organize their events deep, uh, across all, all regions. So this is one thing that has really affected um, the industry that we are in, that is the music industry. However, most, uh, most artists, most execs have found another way of utilizing this um, internet space where we've had live shows online, Zoom meetings happening for execs just to see how, you know, you can do some, uh, you, we can uh, do shows, artists performing, you know, for their, for their fans, their core fans, you know, coming up with campaigns, online campaigns to make sure that there's no disconnect. However, um, as much as, you know, uh, the shows have been shut down and all this, artists are actually working. I've contacted so many artists who are in the studios who are, who are doing, um, who are creating music. We're also seeing, you know, release of music, especially in the East African region. We've had a high number of um, artists releasing albums, actually, which was not there before. So we've seen EPs and albums, you know, growth and also, you know, um, more and more content coming from this region, which is highly unusual because from our back end, um, representing Sub-Saharan Africa, we see a lot of content coming from the West. However, the East Africans have also um, matched up based on the data that we have on our back end. So we've seen a lot of um, content coming in. And these online shows have, have also helped, you know, like the audience to not feel like they've been left behind by, you know, because music is emotional. You want, you know, 
depending on your mood, depending on what you're feeling, you want to, you, you want to feel, uh, it depends on uh, also what you're doing, you want to listen to music. So we've seen um, the artist, you know, um, adapting to the situation and actually moving, you know, a step further and saying, okay, maybe if we can't, if we can't see you offline, then maybe we can see you online, which is actually working. Yeah, a blessing in disguise, perhaps, especially with regards to the productivity of East African artists, as, as you've, you've pointed out. Uh, I'd like to, to um, elab maybe hopefully elaborate on this online experience from a, from a show festival perspective. Ali, uh, from, from your perspective, uh, you know, as um, Talent Africa, how, how has, has this crisis affected uh, your business? I mean, uh, it really affected us quite a bit because uh, we used to produce a lot of live events, but it made us quickly find other avenues of revenue. Um, for example, our, our sister company, Tag Studios, which is Talent Africa Group Studios, um, it, it really opened the doors for Tag Studios to take so many new avenues of, uh, of revenue. You know, so basically, like our studios, like Martha said earlier, we started producing a lot more content in the studios, we're producing TV shows, we're producing online events, online concerts. And, um, you know, we've shifted our entire uh, focus to production. And um, let me give you an example of the Nyege Nyege Festival this year. I mean, like every year it's been, for the last five years, has been really huge physically. But this year we have an opportunity to make the festival even bigger than ever because, you know, we have a TV broadcast partnership, we're going online, we're going to be, um, you know, so instead of the 30,000 people that normally come to the festival physically this year we can actually reach millions of people so you know we need to embrace these opportunities and um, and and find new ways of being creative to move forward yeah thank you thank you Ali uh, I think uh, I'd like to now transition into asking um, each of you maybe some 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 uh, um, questions are uh, more related to your uh, respective um, areas of expertise. Um, and so maybe shifting our, our focus to uh, the, um, the artists in, in this industry, in the, the East African region. And I'd like to, to start with, with George. Um, as as a MOOC Africa, what, what do, you, do you see as the main monetization sources for artists and, and companies? Well, um, and I'll just tie this back into the, uh, the COVID question, because I think the realization has come greatly. So one of the things is um, artists in the region need to figure out monetization, all right? We've been able to, to have artists making money off shows, out of festivals. We have artists who even travel and tour around the world, but um, artists have never done the work to be able to monetize their home audience. So one of the things that has always come out is that the East African front hasn't looked strong from an audience perspective because the artist hasn't learned how to monetize it the best way. And so one of the solutions that we've been building is whether you're doing your online live shows or whether you're releasing an album, how do you start to connect with your audiences? Um, and your audience can be as small, you know, because of the social media age, we've been taught to believe in the 1 million, 200,000, 300,000 numbers of followers. But it's realizing that if you only had 100 or 500 true consumers who are willing to buy your EP or to watch your live show every quarter, this artist will be able to live off of music, which has been a, a huge question, especially for the younger artists. So... I think a great focus and the, and the greatness of innovation. I mean, when you're sitting with, with the Ali's and, and guys like that, the power of innovation that we have within the region is that we're able to build solutions that speak directly to the audience around us. Because a lot of the solutions that exist that um, are out there, as I said, are not one size fits all. So when you start to rethink um, live shows, when you start to think internet TV, when you start to rethink streaming from a very African perspective um, and thinking about who the audience is and where they are and what their data situation is, I think what we are going to see over the next three years is an amazing 
um, amount of innovation around the music and entertainment industry coming out of East Africa. So we're excited to be a part of it. I think at the moment we're working with about a thousand artists on the platform from East Africa and just trying to figure out solutions as to how they can better monetize their music. So just learning even just who these artists are, what are their needs, who are their audiences, different audiences, different needs. And so it's been a, a great journey. And I think the next three years, one, two, three years will be a great um, innovation time for the region and the stuff we build will definitely change music across the world. So I'm excited for this period right now. But artists need to figure out how to monetize their audience and learn who their audience really is. Thank you. Thank you for your insights. Uh, that's certainly, certainly very exciting. Uh, I do share that, that uh, excitement. And as you said, um, uh, as, as you began to respond, uh, the main um, or significant source of income for um, artists has traditionally been live, live shows. Right, and now with, with these, the restriction of movement, with the, the COVID crisis, um, we've seen, and, and that, that restriction sort of leaving artists you know, in, in, their, in their home countries and in the studios, they're now um, producing more music, producing more content and, and hopefully connecting with their home audiences more. And, and, and it is important to, uh, it, 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 it's, it's clear that it's key now to sort of um, find alternative streams of income and monetizing their content. Samuel, um, what is the situation like in terms of publishing, rights management, copyright, and protection of this value chain? Yeah, the, the, the COVID has really affected uh, 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 the landscape in terms of uh, uh, publishing, copyright, and collective management. As I said, we have uh, 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 three copyright societies uh, 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 in the, in the region, I'm, I'm not putting Burundi where the corporate society is really, really at a very, very early stage, but in the rest of, of, of uh, the country in Kenya, in Uganda, in Rwanda and Tanzania, actually we have corporate societies and we have witnessed a drop in, in royalties collected. Uh, 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 and this is expected for this year and next year. Basically, uh, a restriction and lockdown on hotel, restaurant, cafe, bars, nightclubs, festival happening has greatly affected uh, uh, the, the, the ability of artists to be remunerated because there's nowhere their, their music can be uh, played. So this has greatly affected. And it has also affected uh, uh, the broadcasters, you know, uh, the broadcaster uh, uh, TV and radio station are one of the main revenue stream for artists in the region. But the, the advertisement revenues of broadcasters also have been affected by the COVID. So this has also uh, uh, led to a drop in royalties collected. So a quick survey we have done in the region highlighted a drop of between 50 and 60% of royalty collected. And we are still looking at the figure to see if this is going to, to be extended to next year. So basically, uh, uh, this is the issue. And now in terms of royalties collected, in the potential, and this is where it, it's also important to, 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 to put. I'll just give you two examples. One example is Kenya, and the other example is, is Uganda. So when we are talking about uh, 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 Uganda, the potential of royalties to be collected in the region by uh, the corporate societies, we are talking about half a million US dollar, which is the potential. It means if all users are licensed, basically this is what you could get. And in Kenya, where we have a much more wider uh, uh, market, the, the potential for it to be collected go up to 9 million USD. And as of now, uh, Kenya is still collecting only 3 million, you see? So you see the potential of, of collecting. So this is one way uh, uh, artists actually monetized and monetize their creativity. But there is a huge potential also with telcos, with telecommunication companies. So this is one way also where uh, the monetization can really, really happen. Some of you may know the Skiza scheme in Kenya, uh, which is really, really uh, a, a success story, we may say, uh, with the ring back tone uh, 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 there. So the other point which also 
critical is we have seen a shift into the business model, and this were highlighted by, by my, my co-panelists with the streaming online. The lockdown has forced the industry to go online. But the question we need to discuss later on is the licensing of streaming online. It's very important. People believe it's good to reach audience online, but still they need to monetize uh, what they're putting there. So there is effort need to be uh, made on licensing of streaming on online event to make sure that artists are getting remuneration out of this uh, new business model, which I believe in the years to come will really, really boom. That, that uh, thank, thank you, thank you, Samuel, for, for your insights on uh, the monetization from your perspective, um, royalties, um, the potential of more royalties being collected and then introducing an alternative uh, revenue stream being uh, monetizing through streaming. This is a perfect segue into my question for, for Martha. Um, what, what, Martha, what are the business models for streaming services? Okay, currently so far for all the streaming services, they've been using two models, the premium and the premium service. So premium is of course more popular because uh, that's uh, people use their data and they get music. However, the premium services have also improved during this time. We've seen people, uh, we've seen a uh, high number of subscription from, I'll talk on our platform, the data that is that we have. We've seen an increase on sub subscription. Why? Is because we've made it easy for the audience to access music by, you know, um, sorting the issues like how do they pay? Of course, Africa, generally, we don't have a unifying currency like a euro or a dollar. So each country, we have our own local currency. So on the app, you can be able to buy music using your own local currency. And also, we've, we've um, as I'm, again, I mean, um, we've seen that um, content is being released. However, when the top artists release music, we forget about the smaller artists or the discovering new artists, yeah? So we've also tried to um, do content creation by playlisting, you know, putting everything to everybody together so that you can discover as much as you're listening to uh, Jose Chameleon's or to Soul Diamond, you're also discovering Simple Boy, you know, Rich Mavoko and the rest. So, I mean, um, Content, uh, um, content creation has also be played part in that particular thing. Also, there's a gap that all of, most people forget, and it's because we have a very scarce or very limited number of people who do it. Funding, the music, uh, the music industry lacks funding. That's why the output as well, the quality of videos, quality of sound is compromised because, I mean, if I can't feed myself, how do you expect me to make, you know, music? I mean, talent is undisputed. We have talented individuals. However, the extra part, which is, you know, from my talent to packaging it, to making sure that it is, you know, quality and can stand uh, with, uh, you know, in par to par with other, other, other markets is what is lacking as well. So we've tried to find space where we also um, uh, uh, avail funding for artists to create more music and that's why we've seen also some more content is coming from the region and um, the subscription part also our number one uh, our number one um, our number one competition is piracy and so many people are used to getting music for free so how do you compete with that of course you have to make your prices um, affordable to the local mananchi, what we call the normal person, what they can afford. You know, music is a luxury. I don't eat music, yeah, as a user that is. I don't need music. So I can do without it. So how will you convince me to buy music as opposed to getting it for free? So we've made affordable, um, affordable packages for the audience to, to, to um, consume music and also to appreciate the music that we have. On board. And also um, data, I, I mean, we've worked closely with the telcos to bring down the data amount, which we've seen a tremendous um, drop, especially in Kenya, where in the, in the region, Kenya's data packages were quite expensive compared to Tanzania, Uganda. So the telcos have also, you know, um, got into a space that um, they know that, you know, people need um, 
affordable, I was about to say cheap, but affordable um, our data. So that also works in terms of um, getting more and more people to listen to music, the credible and the legal way. Also the government, uh, you know, the governments, we need the government support in terms of regulations and also implementation of the copyright acts. All countries have copyright acts and I'll just speak on Kenya because it was recently amended last year. So the section 35 um, protects the rights of content creators, your IP, what you call IP, that's a whole other discussion. I'm sure we will get into some other time, but um, the implementation of the copyright acts has also seen illegal sites being shut down because once the artists have their music on illegal sites, they don't get that revenue. So we're working hand in hand with, you know, um, other corporates, tel telcos and the government also to make sure, and um, the government parastatals as well to make sure that this is um, curbed. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Martha, for um, your insights. Um, as we conclude uh, this, this panel, which you know, has simply scratched the surface of what it is to, to get into East Africa, and I hope that the, those of you uh, following uh, this panel have some pointers you know, to, 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 to go deeper into some of these areas. Are there any, for the panelists, are there any closing remarks um, that you'd like to, um, to, to make as we wrap up? Yeah, we can tell people to go to the different festival. I think um, something great we have in the region is the, the, the live scene. You know, I think as soon as uh, the lockdown restrictions are uplifted and then we have the festival up, this is a great experience one can have into the region. From Nyege Nyege to Saudi Zabusara to Kigali up, I think we really have great live scene, great uh, uh, landscape uh, uh, in terms of creativity. And I do believe uh, this is one of the region where uh, uh, the potential of growth is really, really huge in terms of investment, especially having a, 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 a regional policy, uh, bringing together five countries, the East African community, and uh, uh, trying to put enabling uh, uh, policies in terms of IP, in terms of uh, free movement of citizen and of goods, of creative content. I do believe this is really a, a region with great opportunity. So uh, for, for, for us here, let's enjoy our region. For those outside, you are welcome, Karibu. Yes, and i also like to say that um, we've seen um, tremendous growth from what the music industry was before to what it is now and to where it's going. So to the audience, to the users, support the music industry. Don't get music for free. Make sure that you get, you know, pay for the music that you consume. To the artists as well, make good music for the audience to support your music as well so that we can get, you know, it's, it's all together. It's all, we need each other. The users need the artists, the artists, need, the consumers need the artists, the artists need the users. So let's make our, let's grow our, um, our music industry and let's make sure that um, we have good governance as Samuel said, and also just push for more, for more growth in the industry. Thank you to Nyege Nyege and Midem for organizing this panel. It's been, it's been good. Thank you, Martha. Just jump in real quick. Um, personally, uh, my last words would just be that, you know, if we can, um, collaborate more, network more within the region, that's going to make East Africa, um, it's going to benefit all of us uh, when it comes to touring, PR, and, and everything else. So let's just like keep our networks open, be open to doing business with many different people. And, um, you know, let's ride the wave of COVID together and get through it. And um, things will get normal again one day soon. So everyone's just got to stay positive. Thank you very much for organizing this. Thank you, Ali. Orji? Um, I think the one thing I'd say is that um, East Africa as a region and our music has changed tremendously. I don't think um, radio or TV is doing it any justice in representation of how broad the, 
the genres have become from Kenya trap all the way across the region. So the one way to find out is to go digging, um, go into the internet, find these artists, follow them, find their music, see what links they've posted up, go stream, go buy, go download, subscribe to their YouTubes. Like you need to go in on it. So right now we need the audience to start to dig deeper than just um, the sphere of 10, 15 artists that they know. But there's a huge potential and the guys in this panel um, are doing great stuff in the region. So keep your eyes out. And thanks to the whole team, Nyege and Medem for, for all the work they're doing, man. We're looking forward to a dope weekend. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, George. And uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you, the panelists, uh, once again, for, for making the time, for sharing your valuable insights on, on this topic, getting into East Africa. Uh, on a panel brought to you by Nyege Nyege and Midem. Uh, it's been a pleasure moderating um, this, this panel today. As a reminder, my, my name is Kevin Rugamba. I realize I didn't properly introduce myself. I think the role that I play in, in, this, in this realm is um, that I'm the founder and creative director of Pineapple Undertones, an edutainment platform that seeks to celebrate and elevate African music culture. And so once again, thank you to those of you that have tuned into this panel. We hope that you walk away with some inspiration, with some motivation and a dedication to, um, to, to making this East African music industry as great as it can be.